Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. You join us uh, just north of Seattle, floating around uh, in one of the Kenmore Air Harbour bases uh, for some seaplane action. We've got the big radials, Grumman Goose for Microsoft Flight Simulator, a project of passion from the big radials team and it's out now for MSFS. We're going to put it through its paces and uh, see what it can do, what it sounds like and I'll be sharing my thoughts with you throughout the this journey. As always, I'd love it if you share your thoughts in the comments below, hit like and of course hit subscribe as well. One of the first things that I've noticed here at the moment is the fact that it floats really nicely on the water. Sometimes a couple of the float planes for the sim, they can almost look like they're floating on top of the surface. Uh, this settles really nicely into the water and it looks quite natural floating away on it. It's also got gear, so uh, we're going to fly down to Renton, we're going to land at Renton, uh, the Boeing facility, just because it's close, and uh, we'll be landing with gear as well, so we'll see how they both uh, both sort of features work, if you like. It's their first aircraft that matches uh, the big radial's name from the website, and it's powered by two Pratt & Whitney radial engines, as you can see mounted on the tops of the wings. Now, they reckon that the Grumman Goose is their most versatile aircraft that they've ever produced so far from the Big Radials team. That said, it's very much a World War II era aircraft and uh, a couple of variants built throughout history. But uh, this Goose in particular is built for MSFS from new and it represents a, an original older World War II model of the Goose. Didn't have any other modifications that came later like electric gear retractable floats, radio stacks and things like that. So there is a hidden GPS which we will find for those of you who might still want to load up with a bit of GPS action and uh, use that to assist your navigation. It's on the website for 35 Australian dollars. It also includes uh, engine failures so if we don't look after these big radial engines they can set on fire, start to emit smoke and all sorts of stuff. Makes it a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more tricky to fly it also includes a bush trip as well, so you can head on a Canadian fishing holiday flying from Seattle all the way to Stewart, uh, which is a nice little added feature there too. And they're apparently, according to the website, they're planning some additional bush trips in the future. They uh, are quite proud to say that they've got thumping and accurate engine sounds throughout. And <laughs> there's a fishing pole and stool is ready, ready to throw in a line after flying to that remote Alaskan Lake apparently, uh, though I've not found it yet, and documents to help assist you with flying this thing. Uh, quick start guys, you could just do control E, uh, make sure your throttle's a quarter of an inch open. But there's a couple of things we're going to go through throughout this little flight today. Let's jump straight into the flight deck. So here we are, very basic inside. Um, you've got the main instrument cluster right in front of us. Uh, the gyro pilot control panel up here in the center of the display and just below that you've got the uh, artificial horizon and a compass. Just below the yoke you've got the tailwheel lock. It's unlocked at the moment so you might want to lock it as well depending on what you're going to be doing and um, you've got your lighting controls here too. Just below that gives you your rudder trim. Working across to the starboard size, two things, aircraft lighting panel below the yoke here and the fire extinguisher selector as well. It might need to be used if uh, the radials aren't managed correctly. And with my track record, that's quite likely. <laughs> Onto the overhead, throttles here and the mixture as well. Flap control valve, up 30, 60, and the engine start controls as well. We've got the starter switches and the ignitions for both engines there too. And uh, with the power gauges just below the bottom of the screens too. Number six on the documentation gives us pressures. All our engine T's and P's are in the overhead and also Right at the very top there's a little dial here and that is our overhead panel lighting switch. Doesn't stop there though. In the overhead panel 
We've got a couple of other sex, uh, sections here too. We've got distribution box for the electrics. Generators, batteries, that sort of thing. As you can see, slightly above that, we've got the fuel selector tank. Going across, we've got the wobble pump. And the fuel cutoffs. Cross feet at the top above the door and we've got our fuel quantity gauges too. Behind the door, between the seats, you've got a couple of things here. You've got a gear crank handle, gear direction selector, elevator trim crank just below, below the uh, captain's right hand side of the seat and then a floor compartment with your GPS. You can also change a couple of functions here as well. So we've got the wheel yoke at the moment. We can uh, hide that. We can also turn it to leather if we want. Oh, look at that. Classy. And we can also add the boarding ladder. And that adds the ladder in just below here too. There's a few other sections here. We've got the fishing stool. So we've turned the fishing stool on. You can see it on the top of the aircraft there. And you can see a little bit of a fishing line as well going into the water for that Alaskan fishing mission. Water helpers on, wheel hubs on or off, anchor on or off as well. So we can also throw a bit of an anchor so we can land anywhere we want in the lakes, add the anchor, go fishing. Really nice. And there's your GPS and of course as well just above that, uh, transponder. To hide it, just click it and away it goes. So a couple of things with Gyra Pilot. Got the master. There's a whole section of checklists uh, to get involved in here. One thing that we will go into though before we do start up is uh, some of the nice little features here that we've got with the aircraft. You can actually work through into the cabin with animated doors. You've got those beautiful wing views as well over the... Uh, over the wings or below the wings I should say and also we've got the door hatches which can be opened and closed on each side depending on what you want to and one really nice little feature just in case you're caught short on your holidays uh, a toilet compartment in the rear very cool and you can also bust out with your custom views and you can head outside the aircraft and you can set all manner of custom views for this Okay, so we've gone through the basics, and what we're going to do now is uh, we, we've got two options. We can either run through all of the checklists, and it could take quite a bit of a bit of a while, effectively, or you can just do what they've also suggested is uh, possible inside the manual, which is to crank the throttle open ever so slightly and hit Control E. We've got up to five minutes from when we actually set a power setting for takeoff to get airborne. And we want to set the RPM to 2300. And a manifold pressure 35.5. One thing it is cool. Is you can open the door. And listen to this fantastic engine roar. We'll open the window, I should say, and listen to the fantastic engine roar. And then we can pin that, lock it. Let's do this. So we've managed to steer ever so slightly to the right. I'm going to let the other throttle come up to meet us here. And I might use the bit of differential actually so that we can get a bit of steer. 35. Here we go. Big radials, goose. And 
where we go across the lake. And there we have it. We can trim accordingly. Get the aircraft set up quite nicely here. About 2,000 RPM for prop control, roughly. And if you've got an extra keybind, like I've got the Velocity One Yoke from Turtle Beach, I've got prop mixture throttle controls all independent and uh, separate to one another. And we could probably just do with that. It's quite a nice little uh, setup here. And then we need to man manage the cylinder head temperatures, the oil pressure, the oil temperatures, uh, fuel pressures, carp heat as required. Uh, and make sure that everything's uh, looking healthy with the aircraft effectively. Uh, pretty much all the time. There's the carp heat, so if we do want to use that we can. And again as a reminder, if you misuse the aircraft you will end up with engine failures, uh, smoke and all that sort of thing. Which is a nice added touch that they've added in here. There are a number of different liveries available with this, uh, including some US Coast Guard ones and this Big Radial's very own brand livery as well. If you want to see the gear go down, there's the animation for it from the outside. Bit of a hazy day today, we're flying on live weather and gear going back up again, like so. And overall, actually, so far, I've got to say, this has been quite fun to fly. Tailwheel is locked. We did that on departure, and we're working the um, gear and things as we need. Once our speed is below 100, which is about now, we can add that gear down. There's the sounds from the inside. And then we could just work through the lake, doing some low flying. Great fun. We want a touchdown speed of about 60 to 65 knots, and it says in the manual in a three-point attitude, or 70 to 75 knots for a wheel landing, which is what we're trying to achieve today. So 75 knots roughly is uh, going to be good for us. Over the threshold, we're going to cut the throttle and we're going to allow the main wheels to touch down first. On excessive bounce or balloon, we have to go around apparently. This looks like the uh, airfield coming in here. Brakes cautiously once the tail's down. It is a tail dragger, don't forget. And of course, with the GPS, you can use this on VATSIM should you want. You've got the transponder and things inside that hidden floor panel uh, to help you. There's the runway. Now we've gone full flap. So we're trying to hold about 75, 80 knots at the moment. I might need a bit more power to be totally honest. I'm definitely going to get comments going, radials don't like throttle changes. It's a bad habit that I can't shake. Okay, we're nice and stable. Boeing Renton. And we're down. Little bit of a bounce.
And just a little bit of brakes to assist us here. Tail wheel. We need to unlock so we can turn. There's those amazing sounds again. All the links will be in the description down below if you do want to get your hands on this great aircraft for MSFS. And there she is, successfully down in Renton. We're going to gently veer off to the right. We're going to find somewhere to sort of park up in this. And while we do it, we can have a little look at some of these animations. So, let's get the flaps up. And while we do that, we can see the aileron deflections as well. Elevator. And rudder. Little replay of the landing from a couple of different views. There go the flap deployments. And there's the threshold. It's great watching all the little animations work independently of one another. And the aeroplane feels heavy, feels a bit clumsy as well. Here we go for the touchdown with a bounce. And we're just gently allowing the aeroplane to uh, slow down and decelerate. There we have it, the big radials goose for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's available now, all the links are in the description below. Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit like, hit subscribe, and uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you in a live stream very soon. Take care.